I, I'm a firm believer it's your choice. I mean, if you love this game, you'll come out with the proper energy. And, and I know there's going to be dog days, and we've got to push through those dog days. But, you know, we got we got to put the work in. And that's what those kids are being told every day. Let's put the work in, and good things will happen at the end. Keith mentioned a couple times about your background with Bronco. He said that right. would help this defense. What ways um, do you think that helps? Well, I think when, whenever you can bring in different perspectives, you know, it's, it's not just one way. I think you can put, you know, a collective group of individuals in there that come from different backgrounds, but we may have defended it a different way, and they may have defended it a different way. But when we put all our heads together and thoughts together, we can come up with a, a consensus and, and, and put ourselves in the best situation. But, you know, being in this game 18 years and being with Bronco for four or five of those years just, you know, taught me how to prepare for excellence each and every day. Yeah. Before they were talking about figuring out who they are. Now they know who they are, mm -hmm. and going from there and taking it a step further is that part of the plan? That's the plan. I mean, we we need to identify our weaknesses before we can move forward. And and you know they're all going to come in saying I can do this, this, and this. No, it's my job to introduce you to your weaknesses so we can build upon those and 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 create a collective where we can go out there and be competitive on Saturday. Is that tough to point out weaknesses to a young kid? Um, does it make it feel less motivated? Does it get no, no. I, I think if you do it in a constructive way, and and my approach is always going to be a, from a fatherly approach. I'm going to talk to those guys as if they were one of my kids, and I'm going to explain to them from step A to step B to step C, you know, the process that it's going to take to get them where they want to be. What are your thoughts on today overall? Today overall, I, I think you know it's day three, first day in pads, and you know. Uh, our job today was to, to get better and, and have simple successes, and I'm not trying to achieve all in one day. And uh, you know, I'm not going to put that on those kids' shoulders. It's going to be a process, and, and that process is going to go through spring ball, summer, you know, conditioning program, fall camp, and then we'll see what that finished product is going to be. Are there any guys that you can point out and you have to say like, oh, slow down a little bit? You know, we still have a lot more time to go. No, you're, you're never going to slow the kids down. I mean, if we can get there as fast as we possibly can, then therefore I can throw more on their shoulders. But right now. You know, I want to make sure we're doing the simplest of things, and that's getting in a stance, and let's, you know, let's master just a backpedal technique right now. When do I transition out of that backpedal? When do I go to the post? Where's my aiming point? Where's my control key? Things of that nature, you know, that are step two, you know, after getting into a stance. And then schematically, you know, Coach Patterson, it's a great scheme. It's a great scheme. It's multiple. It's simple. And, and now we're just mastering the techniques that go with, with certain schemes. And, and if we come out of spring with the fearless and confident uh, group of corners, we're going to be on our way. The fact that you played in the league, does that open kids' eyes? You say, it hey, does. I played with Dion. Uh, you yeah. know, everyone's got to have a little swag about them, you know, and, and those kids understand that. And, and when you say, well, when I did this against Jerry Rice or when I did this against Tim Brown, they listen just a little bit closer. And, you know, the one thing about what I've done, I've been able to tell those guys, I've been your age, you've never been my age. So have big eyes and big ears, you know, and just listen. How about calling defenses in Conference USA? Because the style in the Big 12, wide open, right. running, passing, same thing. There's some carryover there, isn't there? There's a ton of carryover. Who's not running spread? You know, unless you're playing an option team every once in a while. But, you know, that's, that's the beauty of why I think Coach Patterson and I have meshed so well. One, our philosophies are very similar, you know, as far as, you know, great effort being simple, but, but you know, multiple in what we're doing up front and, and in the back end. And then, you know, we were a 3-4 team at East Carolina, and 80% of what they do here is what we did at East Carolina. It's that 20% that I wish I'd have had at East Carolina, you know, that uh, would have made us even better. So, uh, you know, I feel like some of the experiences that I had at, at uh, East Carolina the last three years hopefully will will add to the pool of thoughts that you know will go and defend the team in the Big 12. Plus, you know, I was at Texas Tech for four, so a lot of these teams haven't changed schematically. And, you know, a lot of the head coaches are still the same. Some of the coordinators have moved on, but I know the talent level in the Big 12, and I know what it takes to to get out there and defend it. You know, they've talked to about getting this roster turned over to more of a Big 12 style roster right. before they had Big East kids, that type of thing. Are you seeing that? Is that happening? Is that still a process? Well, I mean, it starts with 
your recruiting classes, and I think this, this last recruiting class that we're bringing in, you're seeing, you know, some talented individuals. You're seeing some height. You're seeing some speed. You're seeing some guys from the south that, you know, are, are, are playmakers. And you look at Daryl Worley from Philadelphia. I mean, he's a six-two guy that can play corner or safety. You look at Jeremy Tyler down in, in Atlanta. He could play corner or safety, but he's six-one, six-two. You look at Devonte Henry and some of the guys, Golson. They're all six-threes.